Now let's come back to uh, Wafa Kwam Pianim. Uh, do they still have the... Uh, yes. Pianim says, it's a shame that Ghana's yield trained finance minister has been a historic disaster. With the greatest of respect to Wafa Kwam Pianim, we do not agree with this statement because the data doesn't bear it out. So he's referring to Ken Ofoyata, who is a yield graduate, who became our finance minister in 2017. Now, Kwam Pianim says that, and people are talking about e-levy and economic situation, the economy is hard and all of that. We have been doing the digging and we have seen what happened with COVID. And we're going to bring you back tonight some of the conversations that happened in COVID with the president's speeches that indicated that this was going to happen. Uh, so with the greatest of respect, we do not agree with Ofa Kwame Pienim. Now let's go on and see. Okay. So we are going to start with GDP growth. And these are figures that are the, obtained from the statistical department here in Accra. Uh, real GDP growth, which is a, a, a great indicator of uh, the finances of any country. Real GDP growth is a great indicator of the finances of any country. Uh, this is Ken Ofoyata's photograph we put up here. And this is the real GDP growth over the period. 2016's GDP growth was 3.4. 2017 was 8.1. Okay, now let's look. Let's say something about 2017 and 2018. So the NDC will say that whatever happened in 2017 was because of the work they did in 2016. The MPP will say that whatever happened um, in 2017 is as a result of the confidence that international people had in Ghana because they arrived. That's what MPP will tell you. MPP will tell you that 2017, as soon as we arrived, international community saw that we are better managers of the economy. So there was a lot of confidence. People were pouring money into our economy. GIPC has fantastic figures. NDC will say it was 2016 that made 2017. Anyway, so let's move on. 2016, 3.4. Finance minister takes over in uh, February 2017. At the end of 2017, growth is 8.1. That's not a disaster, Mr. Kwame Pienim. That's not a disaster. That's can, that cannot be called a disaster. You can't call this a disaster. Let's move on. In 2018, growth comes up to 6.3. Now, let's be very clear on something. In March 2017, Ken Ofoyata announced a budget. In that budget, he canceled so many taxes. He also announced that in September of 2017, free SHS will start with one year. He also announced that nurses and training, teacher training allowances, which had been stopped by President Mahama, will be reinstituted. All of that was going to bring a bill to the budget, to the economy. It was going to bring a bigger bill to the budget, bigger than 2016. In spite of all of these announcements in March 2017, Oferata achieved 8.1 growth from 16 to 17. How is that a disaster? How, why? I, well, it's okay for us to forget, but these are the facts. It's not, can, you cannot call, nobody can look at this and call it a disaster. You can't come after COVID and say, oh, he's a disaster. No, let's, let's, let's look at it fair and square. So in 2017, he has 8.1 growth. In 2018, it drops to 6.3. Now by 2018, all of the, infa, uh, uh, the spending, all of the spending uh, for free SHS is now double. It's now two years and, and uh, NAPCO is about to start. So 26, 6.3. 6.3 is still greater than 2017, 2016's 3.4. It is. There was no economic disaster in 2016. There was no COVID in 2016. 3.4 growth is what the government that had been in power for eight years was posting. The government been in power since 2009. 2016, they were posting economic growth of 3.4. And they are calling somebody a disaster. I mean, Mr. Pienim, that's, that's wrong. That's not correct. Okay. So 2018 is 6.3. 2019 goes up to 6.5. 2020, the budget estimates is 6.8. And then they revise it to 0 0.9 as soon as COVID arrives. That's revised to 0 0.9. The economy actually ended at a 0 0.4 growth in 2020. But you can understand why that happened. Anybody, any first year economic students can understand why that happened. COVID happened across the world, the whole world. Everything went down. People were asked to stay at home. People were not working. All the companies, foreign companies that work in Ghana closed and went home. And even when we we're looking for things we couldn't get, because if the company is closed and gone home, every government was looking after themselves. Every country was looking after themselves. So if you have Swedish companies here who are working and employing people, they're closed. Private sector closed. People went out of jobs. Teachers who were teaching in the private sector went home without salary. Teachers who were teaching in the public sector went home with salary. Anybody who worked in the public sector, which of course employs the majority of our people, went home with salary. Went home with salary and they were asked not to pay water bill 
and not to pay electricity bill. That has never happened in the history of this country. I don't know how many other countries did that, but in the history of this country, that has never happened. Where workers are asked to stay home, they will be paid, and the, the utility bills that they pay as their contribution, government says don't pay them. I'll remind you of a few things tonight. So this is economic growth, and then we come to 2021. This is what the budget estimated, and now, last quarter of 2021, the growth is at 5.21. Now, can you imagine this? Last quarter of 2021, Ghana's GDP growth is at 5.2. 2016 is 3.4. 2021, last quarter, is still greater than 2016. We are not going to forget these things. These are data that we can deal with. So when Kwame PNM says, Kenoforata has been a disaster, is that what he as an economist, a Yale graduate, Kwame PNM, serious economist like that, is that what you're looking at and calling a disaster? Where, what is the disaster? Anyway, all right, so we come to annual inflation. Uh, on the same figures, because we obtained it from the statistics, we wanted people to see it. So, annual inflation. 2016 is 15.4. Inflation. Now, inflation, the higher it is, the worse it is. I'm, I'm sure you know that. It's not like economic growth. Inflation, you are high, you are bad. You are low, you are good. So, so like, with that background, let's look at it. High is bad, low is good. Okay. 2016, 15.4. 2011, 11.8. 2017, 11.8. So, this is Ophiata's first uh, test of inflation which he inherits at 15.4, and he brings it to 11.8 at, at the end of 17. Okay, let's do the same, and let's NDC say that. Okay, this was our work. MPP will say it's because investors were excited. So we can do the politics of that. But then when we come to 18, you can't do that anymore because 18 inherited 17. Okay, so um, 2017, 11.8. Then 2018, 9.4. 2019, 7.9. 2020, budget estimate is 8. It goes on to become uh, the provision, then they revise it to 11, and then it actually ends at 10. 2021 budget is 8, and last quarter is 12.6. Okay, so this is Ken Oferata's re leadership record as far as inflation is concerned, one of the other key indicators of whether an economy is doing well or not. By this time, NAPCO people were in already. By this time, NAPCO was in. NAPCO was very, very in by this time. Okay, so you have these figures. Anyone should look at this and tell me where is the disaster that Kwame PNM is pointing us to? Where is the disaster? Well, for Kwame PNM says that Ghana's finance minister has been a historic disaster. Where is the disaster? These are the figures. This is the COVID period. Where is the disaster? You know, during COVID, so many things happened, and I think that sometimes uh, we forget, you see, because the president said something in the COVID broadcast, uh, the, the second one. The president said something in the COVID broadcast. He said one day, he came to talk to us, and he had been announcing measures. But before he announced the measures, he came to talk to us. And when COVID came, every president was concerned about how the economy is going to do. You remember Donald Trump? He refused to close the American economy because he was looking at it and said, if I close the American economy, it's a total disaster. How are we going to survive? I'll show you at the end of this video how America has done after, after COVID. So the president was getting reports from the Ministry of Finance. And he said, I want to close the country. I want to lock down the country. And Ministry of Finance said, Mr. President, if you lock down the country, these are the ramifications. We're going to have an economic disaster. We are doing very fine on economic growth. We know that COVID is a problem. But if you go ahead to lock the country, we're going to be in trouble. The president said, but the people are weak. I can't watch Ghanaians to die of COVID. I need to lock down the country so we do contact tracing, spend a lot of money. You remember that in Ghana, in those days, Nigerian... Uh, um, uh, socialists were posting it. When you arrived in Ghana, they put you in a hotel at the, at the cost of the state at the beginning of COVID. They put you in a hotel and the, and the government pays for it. It took about a year before the government said they cannot pay for it anymore. When you come from abroad, you pay for it yourself. But at the beginning of COVID, you come to Kotokai, but they put you in a hotel. Nigerians were filming the food they were giving in the hotel and they were saying that Ghana is great. Yes, all of that happened on, under the auspices of a direction by the president that I need to save lives. And the people said, Mr. President, if you save lives, our economy will go down. And the president said that, that well, the economy goes down, we can bring it back. But if people die, what do we do? Here, President Akufuado announcing that to the, to the country, that he doesn't know how to bring back the debt, but he knows how to bring back a bad economy. Have a look. As we have demonstrated over the course of the last three years, where we inherited an economy that was growing at 3.4% and transformed it into one which has grown by an average of 7%, over the last three years, I assure you that we know what to do to bring back our economy back to life. What we do not know 
is how to bring people back to life. We will therefore protect people's lives, then their livelihoods. Yes, so you heard that. Uh, that's what the president told us. He said, so he, now he made the statement because he understood that the kinds of decisions he was going to make with COVID will, will bring difficulty. But he said that we have inherited an economy of 8.3.4 and look at how we have taken the economy. So clearly, we know how to fix an economy, but we cannot, if people die, what economy are you going to fix? So let's do all we can so that people will not die. Those measures included paying a lot of money and creating debt onto the public profile. Here is some of uh, the measures that were announced by the president. Have a listen. Again, the Ghana Water Company Limited and the Electricity Company of Ghana have been directed to ensure the stable supply of water and electricity during this period. In addition, there will be no disconnection of supply. Furthermore, government will absorb the water bills for all Ghanaians for the next three months, i.e. April, May, and June. All water tankers, publicly and privately owned, are also going to be mobilized to ensure the supply of water to all vulnerable communities. That was President Akufado speaking. Now, this is uh, the issue about water to communities and, uh, and all of that. And people were at home and they were being paid and there was no productivity. So that's what happened. Everyone knows that. If there's difficulty today, the president had already alerted us that he, they have inherited an economy of 3.4 and they had brought it back. So they know how to do that. And so they had to spend as much as they could spend. And I understand that people are asking for approving to the COVID spend. I think that's legitimate. It's legitimate. People, the government should be able to tell us what has been with the COVID money, what expenditure it was used for. The other day, asked us, do boy over here. He said 25 billion cities had been used for the COVID money. We asked him whether if there was something else they could change, will they change? He said they would change some of the things. But at that time, WHO was directing on what you should do and what you should not do. Eventually, WHO itself, having studied the virus better, came and said that this thing we said you should do, you didn't need to do. Whether the virus was in the air, whether the virus was on surfaces, different kinds of analysis were coming from WHO. You can't blame them because they were also studying it. And they were studying it for the first time. It was a novelty. They were desperate to save the world of people dying. So they gave us the information at the time that they thought was correct. Later, they looked at it and thought that this information could have been better presented. So all of those things happen now. I mean, sometimes people say, oh, but Akufado did too much with COVID. He did. No, he needed to do it because nobody knew where COVID was going. Now we can sit back and now these days people get COVID, they even announce it. In fact, when you call people for meetings and they don't want to come, they say, I have COVID. But nobody was saying that before. But now the, 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 the whole uh, um, mysticism is broken and everything is gone. And we can talk like this. We have a difficult economy, but the, the facts are the facts. And we don't think people like Kwame Pienim, very respected man like that. Of Kwame Pienim says that Ken Ophirata is a disaster because of the current state of affairs. He didn't say that in 2017. He didn't say that in 2018. He saw Ken Ophirata take the oath of office in 2017 to become uh, finance minister. He didn't say that in 2017. He didn't say that in 2018. He didn't say that in 2019. Then in 2022, when the whole world is in a disastrous economic situation and Ghana is trying to manage. In all of those processes, the big public spending has not been redrawn. Free SHS has not been redrawn. A day students who are being fed one meal a day, which was not part of the curricula. It wasn't even part of the free SHS promise. But President Akufado felt that if we're doing it, let's do it well. That has not been withdrawn. It's still being done. The buffer stock, when things run out, we have to import. It hasn't been withdrawn. All those spending is being done. I still support an investigation into how COVID money was spent. And I'm sure the government has the data to show it. Vaccinations were done for free. So why is Kwame Pinim talking about this? representing an economic disaster. He's certainly wrong. He's palpably wrong. He's manifestly wrong. And I think that he shouldn't, he shouldn't make statements that uh, don't have the facts to back it. Kwame PNM is better than, than rabble rousing and populism. Kwame PNM is far better than that. I gave you his history before. That's what Kwame PNM represents. He represents a democratic icon. Why should he be saying these things? It's not very nice at all. Let's come to the final one, the gross international reserves. That is the money that Ghana has, you know, abroad. 2016, 6.2 billion. 2017, 7.6 billion. So 6.2 billion is the reserves for 2016. After spending on free SHS and everything in 2017, it goes up to 6.7 billion. 2018, it comes down to 7 billion. 2019, it goes up to 8.4 billion. Is that what you're seeing on the TV viewers? Does it look like an economic disaster? 
So what figures were Mr. PNM looking at to make this conclusion that something is an economic disaster? It's so unfair and it's so wrong. It's not, it's not fair and it's very, very wrong. This is not an economic disaster, Mr. Kwan Pienim. Well, I like to call him Wofa Kwan Pienim. Wofa Pienim, this is not an economic disaster. What the figures we're seeing here, in terms of one aspect of it, is the gross international reserve, it's not an economic disaster. Okay, 2020, it doesn't apply. 20, uh, budget and revised budget doesn't apply. Provisional was 8.6. Uh, and then the actual budget doesn't apply. Now, Q, Q3, third quarter of 2021, post-COVID, uh, Ghana's economic reserve is now showing 9.7 billion, still greater than 2016. 9.7 billion here is greater than 2016. How is that a disaster? It, it cannot call this a disaster. I mean, I don't know why. Well, we've, that's, that's the end. But the conclusion is that, uh, unfortunately for, for Mr. Pianim, you can't call this a disaster. <laughs>